that we have a new president elect at least and that looks a little more likely considering the news over the last 24 hours or so i don't know if you heard or not uh, but we got a verdict in the trump trial in new york city i don't know if you heard or not uh, but 12 jurors um voted guilty uh considering all of the evidence before them they made the decision to uh declare donald trump guilty of 34 counts of what was misdemeanor mishandling of um mishandling of or misclassifying of uh, tax documents uh, and what became a felony as a result of Alvin Bragg's desperate attempt in order to get Donald Trump and really, uh, by extension, the Department of Justice and Joe Biden himself and the Biden administration. So we're going to break all of that down for you today. But before we do, I have to tell you where we are and where I would like for you to be. I would love for you to come out and see us. I have the pleasure of being out in Winchester, Tennessee today at the beautiful Twin Creeks Marina and resort i've never had the opportunity to be here in the past and being here today is pretty special hey guys how are y'all a lot of folks coming out uh having something to eat at the drafts and watercrafts uh twin creeks marina uh restaurant uh which is a floating restaurant right here on the docks uh at the marina it is beautiful out here i i, I mean this is uh, i guess uh tim ford's lake I believe that's correct, to, uh, Tim Ford's uh, Lake, uh, and you can, uh, if you've never been, uh, just come down. Uh, although most of the people, uh, you know, and I, I think you'll uh, you'll understand why if you've ever seen it or if you ever do come down and see it. Most of the people who have come by who are from Winchester have asked me not to tell anybody about Tim Ford's Lake or the marina, or anything else about this part of the world because they want to keep it to themselves. But we're going to tell everybody about it uh, because that's part of why we're here. Uh, we're uh, having a good time at the restaurant. You can come by and see us. They've got live music Thursday through Sunday, trivia and great food. They've got a marina with boat rentals. Uh, I just picked up uh, one of the boat rental slips uh, looking at some of the pricing for the boat rentals. Uh, and uh, if you're looking for a fun uh, lake getaway away from Nashville and all of the hustle and bustle of a metropolitan area, this is the great way way to do it. You can wake up to the sounds of waves uh, crashing from the lake, etc., etc. They've got weddings and events. I'll tell you all about it as the show goes on. Obviously, we're going to take many of your telephone calls at 615-737-9986. 615-737-WWTN. You can also get your comments in on the membersnutrition.com super text line. 615-737-9986. John says, sorry, Matt, but it's Tim Ford's Lake, FYI. That's what I said. Isn't that what I said? I thought that's what I said. Um, did I leave the? Did I say? Did I just say Ford? Thank you, Kirby. That's probably what it was. That's why I was being corrected. I left the S off of Tim Ford. Tim Ford's Lake. Yes, it is one man's lake, and his name is Tim Ford. It's not Matt Murphy's Lake. It is Tim's Lake. I don't know who Tim is, but I'm going to learn today, and I'm going to teach you all today as well. It's going to be difficult for me to express the level of anger, frustration, and annoyance at our American judicial system as I broadcast from such a beautiful and wonderful facility with so many folks laid back that are on the lake. It's hard to get upset about the rest of the world. And, you know, frankly, as I sit here, it occurs to me how easy it is to understand how so many have checked out of what has become such a frustrating uh, political system and what has become such a dare i say rigged political game when it comes to donald trump in the election season of 2024 i can i can almost understand why one would want to check out and i am going to spend the next three hours of my show in the next five months leading up to the november elections expressing to you why it's so important that you get the needed information for yourself do not depend on mainstream media, but get that needed information for yourself to make the appropriate decisions about the true future of the United States of America. Because as it's been said many times since the verdict came down yesterday, the real verdict is not in a courtroom in New York City. The real verdict does not involve 12 liberals adjudicating and judging Donald Trump for themselves based on a setup and rigged game within Merchant's courtroom. The real verdict will come on November 5th and beyond. And I think we've seen a verdict of sorts by the American people in the aftermath of the decision yesterday by the jury. 
in as much as Donald Trump has raised, uh, I think it's almost $40 million now in less than 24 hours as a result of this. You have people, the, you have individuals that you can consider them right of center if you will, uh, but these are no fans of Donald Trump coming out and saying, you know what, I mean, for example, Vice President Mike Pence, or former Vice President Mike Pence, who served with Donald Trump for four years, who did not end their relationship very favorably, and who has very dramatically publicly declared that he would not endorse Donald Trump for President of the United States. Even someone along the lines of a Mike Pence, which many Trump supporters consider to be a turncoat, has stepped out and said that this was a miscarriage of justice. It was a a, a travesty of injustice. In the meantime, as we broadcast from the marina, Twin Creeks, you uh, you okay over there, CJ? You gonna be all right? You get a uh, you get yourself a fish. So CJ just realized that fish can jump. What? Come over here, would you? Uh, I imagine that. Our reactions were fairly similar. I'll describe mine to you. We'll take your immediate reaction. Obviously, we'll talk to Jay St. Clair at 105 today and get his reaction from a legal perspective. Jay's going to describe for us where all of this goes from here, Uh, what we can expect from an appellate process, what we can expect from a sentencing process. Will the judge remand Donald Trump into custody? I don't know the answer to that. I mean, Common sense would dictate that it doesn't happen, but has there been any common sense displayed in any of the proceedings that have been going on for the past several months? I think not. So I throw everything out of the window in terms of conventional wisdom or what we might expect will happen in the next several weeks and several months leading to, one, the debate on June 27th. I think that throws this up in the air. I think it gives Joe Biden, who does not really want to debate, right? I think it gives him and his team a little bit of wiggle room as to how they can finagle out of this debate that they found themselves in. Because, you know, they laid down the gauntlet challenging Trump, thinking that he would not take them up on their bluff. Donald Trump immediately did take them up on their bluff, said, absolutely, I'll debate you anywhere, in any format, with any moderators, any time, you name it, time, place, and manner, and I will do it. And so Joe Biden did, CNN, loaded game, right? I mean, obviously, the The deck is now stacked against Donald Trump in this debate setting, but Donald Trump doesn't care. He's perfectly willing to take on three against one. And when you consider that Joe Biden's not really all there, it's it's really only like two and a half against one. That said, this gives Joe Biden a certain level of wiggle room out of that because Joe could be and his team could be smarmy about all this and say that they're not going to debate a convicted felon on that front. The mainstream media gleefully reported this all afternoon, all evening long, and into the morning this morning, that Donald Trump is now a convicted felon. Uh, And as much as this trial was a dog and pony show, I suppose that it is true. Um, If you believe in the American system of justice, and call me a Pollyanna, but I still do, uh, then we have to believe that it is not perfect. And sadly, we we are seeing the best modern illustration of the imperfections of our judicial system laid bare before us. Um, Sadly, if our institutions that are designed to prevent these types of things from happening, and by those institutions I mean the mainstream media, the press, I mean our fourth estate, that is to be the, you know, what was formerly known as the newspaper industry, the television industry, the radio industry, if these media outlets that are designed to present the news in at least a somewhat objective manner, if they choose to pick sides and therefore they choose what stories they're going to cover or not cover, depending on who it looks good for and who it looks bad for, then that tilts the system in a way where you can get away with some of this miscarriage of justice. Secondarily, if you have judges, if you have prosecutors, if you have lawyers, and sadly, if you have a jury system that is tilted against a political candidate in this fashion, this is what this is the way that you can exploit the system. Does that mean that our justice system is broken beyond repair? You know, I don't know uh, the answer to that question, and that's as sad of a commentary as I can make for you today about what's going on. Um, I would have told you 
yesterday and the day before and the week before and months before uh, that our judicial system, while imperfect and while exploitable, is the best thing going on God's green earth, and it will and can overcome the politicalization of the system. Uh, today, I don't know the answer to that, and I think I think it really it really remains to be seen whether or not this is looked at as a somewhat fatal blow against the system. Um, that said, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to get your response. Does this fire you up? Does it depress you? My uh, ra- my range of emotions went this way. So politics is the ultimate blood sport. And for those of us who are fans of sport, along with followers of politics, then you can kind of understand the natural analogies that come along with feeling like your team lost in the big game. And yesterday, when I heard, one, I was shocked that we had a verdict ex- as quickly as we did, and I think it's a byproduct of the um, the sad nature of the jury and the sad nature of New York City, and more on that in a moment. I was shocked that we had a verdict as quickly as we did. I had convinced myself that the case was so badly presented by the prosecution. I had convinced myself that even with a tilted jury, even with a jury of 12 that were predispositioned to be against the defendant from the jump before they heard one scintilla of evidence, that with the poorly, the, with the, the poor manner in which the prosecution presented their case, with a lack of connective tissue between what are ultimately misdemeanor uh, charges regarding the, uh, the mislabeling of uh, payments, uh, made to Michael Cohen, although he's a lawyer and they were labeled as legal expenses, um, with a lack of connecting that to a felony, with a lack of connecting these dots, with the lack of credibility of Michael Cohen, their star witness, that even 12 jurors who we suppose are going to be predisposed to be against Donald Trump, I felt strongly uh, that there would be one or two or even more uh, that would recognize the the lack of legal precedent in this case, the lack of connective tissue in this case, the lack of ability to connect uh, the 34 documents charges with the so-called felony. And I'm going to go over all of these things because I think it, it is important. You know, one of the things that I recognized yesterday after the immediate shock of the timing of all of this, because I was fairly convinced, and I said it yesterday on the show, that this would move into next week. I thought we would get to Monday or Tuesday of next week uh, before we saw a verdict, and we did not even get to a Friday deliberation process. Um, so after I got over that, I I had a conversation with someone who has not been a friend of mine, who's not been following as closely uh, the details of the case. And it, I was telling Dan Mandis this yesterday afternoon and, and early this morning, I came to realize how difficult it is to help people understand what a railroad job this is if they've not been keeping up. In other words, if someone landed from another planet, if you had a Martian come down to planet Earth and land and say, tell me all about this Trump trial, where would you start? Well, you have to start like eight or nine or ten years ago, and you have to catch everyone up. You have to fill them in with the danger that Donald Trump is to the establishment, to the deep state, to the bureaucratic state. You have to catch them up with some of his business dealings in New York City. You have to catch them up with a lot of things before you even get to the nature of the charges against him. And then you have to go through the legal process and get very, very in the weeds with regard to why this doesn't pass muster and why most, just about every single legal scholar or expert that I've talked to has said consistently that there is zero point zero chance that any of this stands up on appeal but that wasn't the point was it because we have married politics and our justice system in such a way that we have created a perverted frankenstein's monster as a result of that consummation